starts right now. The National Hockey League rocked by a sexual abuse scandal stemming from an incident 11 years ago. The latest fallout still ahead. It was trouble knocking out the door for one man who is now dead after an overnight shooting. Details coming up next. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting nice and cool again. We're in the 50s. And good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is October 29th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great week. Yesterday, I mean, I knew it was cooler, but we went to a Little League game, and I forgot to pack an extra jacket. Oh, did you get chilly last <laughs> yes, night? Yes, it did. Yes, yeah. it did. It did cool off very quick. Nice this morning, back down in the mid-50s. And Mike Osterage is here with more on our Friday and our weekend. So, uh, word to the wise, don't do what Stephanie did not do. <laughs> about taking a jacket if you're going to a football game tonight because it is going to cool off very quickly. Uh, we're going to continue to cool off this morning. It is another just spectacular morning. Temperature right now 55 in town, but already down to 41 in Kerrville, 50 Balverde, and 53 Stinson, 48 Hondo. So we will continue to cool down a couple of over the next couple of hours. Mold is moderate, juniper and ragweed on the low side and throughout the rest of the morning. Going for a 48 degrees here in town. Clear, chilly, and then it is going to be Kind of on the breezy side again today, slightly down from yesterday. We made it to the upper 70s. We'll be at 75 degrees and still uh, breezy, but yeah, just an absolutely gorgeous day. But then with this dry air, it will cool off very quickly. So going to a football game tonight, it is going to be spectacular late fall weather for football. About 70 at kickoff, 63 at halftime. Weekend looks fantastic. Going to have the trick-or-treating forecast coming up and then another front, maybe even a couple of them as we go into next week and even towards next weekend. More on that in just a couple of minutes. Tra uh, traffic Authority, when Stephen Cavazos is here at 430, unfortunately, it's not good news. Yeah, you know, but we do have some good news to talk about, though, Mike. Uh, I came in here a little bit earlier to talk about a crash that happened here off 35 at Judson, but taking a look at Trans Guide, looks like that scene cleared just moments before this newscast. Now, we still have some road flares out there. Obviously, those should be out probably within the next half hour or so, but that crash was taking up a lot of space here in these northbound lanes of 35, uh, approximately about two to three lanes, and now you can see that it is pretty quiet this morning, which is pretty good. 35 has been a big trouble spot this week. We've had a lot of issues happening off the highway and on the highway. So taking a look on the map, it is not causing any issues. That crash again has thankfully cleared from our system. Right now, our map does show it was on the northbound lanes right at Judson. At least two lanes were blocked uh, for quite a while, but thankfully that is cleared out and the roads are nice and open for you to enjoy and drive off into the weekend. Uh, taking a look around town, though, pretty quiet on Loop 410 and 1604. Even on 35, you're not going to see any real delays at this hour. Uh, but we're going to continue to watch these roads closely. Again, this crash has cleared from 35 at Judson. A little later on in this newscast, we'll talk construction spots as we get ready for the upcoming holiday weekend. Guys. Seen a bit new, new this morning. Police investigating a shooting on the west side. One man is dead. Jonathan Cotto joins us live from Public Safety Headquarters. Jonathan, what do we know about the case so far? Well, Mark, we do know that the victim in this case was rushed to University Hospital, but unfortunately did die upon arrival. Information is limited, but this is what we know so far. Police responded to West Commerce this more uh, overnight, uh, and that's near Our Lady of the Lake University, close to 11 o'clock last night. Police say the victim was inside with two other people when there was a knock at the door. They say his door was chained, but the suspect managed to stick his gun inside, firing off a shot, hitting the victim, in the chest. Now, homicide detectives were on scene. San Antonio Fire Department, along with EMS, also responding. Now, the victim again was taken to University Hospital, where he died on arrival. Now, police are investigating what motivated that shooting, but of course, this case remains under investigation. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Today is the final day of early voting in the Texas Constitutional Amendment elections. Voters will decide on eight proposed constitutional amendments. The polls open up at 8 a.m. You can find a list of early voting locations on our website, ksat.com. You can also find information about each of the proposed amendments online, too. Election Day is on Tuesday. 434 in your morning headlines. A new fallout from a sex abuse scandal rocking the NHL. A coach of the Florida Panthers has now resigned. As ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi reports, it comes just one day after a player claimed the coach ignored his sexual abuse claims 11 years ago. This morning, new fallout stemming from the sex abuse scandal involving the Chicago Blackhawks. Florida Panthers head coach Joel Quenville resigning overnight. 
after an investigation revealed he had knowledge of a player's abuse allegations in 2010 when Quenville was coach of the Blackhawks. I buried this for 10 years, 11 years. On Wednesday, Kyle Beach coming forward as John Doe, the former Blackhawks player who sued the team claiming its former video coach, Brad Aldrich, sexually assaulted him. Beach says he reported the assault to high-ranking team officials, including Quenville. I watched the entire leadership management group enter Joel Quenville's office to have a meeting about it. But Aldrich remained with the team through its Stanley Cup victory in 2010, only leaving after being given an ultimatum to undergo an investigation or resign. Aldrich maintains the encounter with then 20-year-old Beach was entirely consensual. In 2013, Aldrich was convicted on sex charges involving a minor. I felt so guilty that because I didn't do something that it happened to this boy. But in the same breath and over the next months to get to this point, I owe him the greatest thanks ever because he also gave me the power to come forward, to tell my story, to tell my truth. Quenville releasing a statement announcing his resignation, saying, quote, I want to express my sorrow for the pain this young man, Kyle Beach, has suffered. The Blackhawks general manager and vice president of the team resigned earlier this week as a result of the investigation. And the team was fined $2 million. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Data from U.S. Border Patrol shows there were a record number of deaths at the U.S.-Mexico border last year. According to the information, there were nearly 560 southwest border deaths during the last fiscal year. A number of significant increase up from just over 250 deaths in 2020 and 300 in 2019. The numbers are not representative of all migrant border deaths, but the agency tracks them to better understand the dangers of unlawfully crossing into the U.S. The data also shows it was a record year for border crossings and arrests at the border. And time now, it's 437 and it's about 55 degrees out there. Coming up after the break, sports. We've got, had a few high school football games last night. We will recap them for you. And ouch, 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 the Spurs lose another game. Highlights from last night's game against the Mavs coming up next. Yeah, they were in control for a I while, kind of like the Lakers game, and then they fall to the Mavs. We'll have that final. Outside with live cam, yeah, you will definitely need a jacket this morning. It's not going to warm up till uh, much later on in the morning hours. You're watching GMSA on a Friday. Hey, welcome back. Time for a look at sports. Spurs starting a three-game road trip last night facing the Dallas Mavericks and the new head coach Jason Kidd. Silver and Black will jump out to a 25-5 lead. And the Mavs didn't have a field goal total. Luka Doncic scored with about six and a half left in the first quarter. But the Spurs could not close the deal again. They fall to the Mavs 104-99. to Spurs' next game will be tomorrow, 7 p.m. against the Bucks in Milwaukee. Thursday Night Lights, Holmes Huskies trying to get to the playoffs against number one Brennan Bears, trying to stay undefeated. Bears with the ball first. Quarterback Ashton DeBose, play action pass. Nice move to dodge a charging defender and fires deep over the middle to Aaron DeBose, who is behind the defense with uh, defense. What? No. Oh, is that the same? Oh, so it's Ashton DeBose and then Aaron DeBose. Got it. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Brennan would score first, pretty much control the game. Bears demolish the Huskies, the final 55 to three. Next game is between the Floresville Tigers and the champion Chargers. This game about playoff positioning. Chargers running back Alex Rodriguez gets a champ gets champion early lead with this 11 yard touchdown run right up the middle. Tigers roar back quarterback Braden Fuller rolls out finds Brandon Cortez in the flat makes his way inside the champion 20. They would camp off the drive with a goal line touchdown for running back Darian Murphy and it's a 7 7 ball game. But Bernie champion Takes this one, the final, 35-28. Couple of other games last night. Mainer New Tech would defeat the Young Men's Leadership Academy, 48-21. Seguin gets the win over Lehman, 35-16. Week 10, if you can believe it, of high school ball. Just getting started with another full night of games this evening. Be sure to download our big game coverage app to stay up to date with scores and highlights. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. <laughs> Excuse me, I was trying real hard not to sneeze that whole time. Turning now to the Cowboys for the past two workouts this week. Dak Prescott's been listed as limited in workouts before the Cowboys face the Vikings on Sunday Night Football. 
trying to go for six in a row after losing their opener. Prescott suffered a right calf strain in the Cowboys 35-29 OT win over the Patriots on the very last play, but has had extra week to recover thanks to the bye week. Dak admits if it was up to him, he'd be good to go, but it's not. If it was my call and it was totally up to me, yes, but this is something I, I agree with the experts. I don't, want, I don't want to linger. I don't want this, this to be week after week. Are we going through this? Um, so to me, it's just about getting better, controlling what I can. And like I said, I've gotten better and taking big steps every day uh, and plan to take another one, another big step tomorrow. And so um, I don't know if the decision comes Saturday or when it comes, but um, yeah, I'm doing everything I can to make sure that I give myself the best, best chance. And tonight, Game 3 of the World Series set to start around 7 o'clock in Atlanta. The series tied at a game apiece. And that's a look at morning sports. And time now, it's 4.43 and it's about 55 degrees out there. Still to come on GMSA, a look at former NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick's new autobiographical, excuse me, autobiographical series on Netflix. Hey, coming up next, top recommendations for space heaters. If you're looking for a way to warm up your home, Plus, what you'll need to know to keep your home safe. Now that we're seeing some chilly mornings, if you don't rely on natural gas to heat your home and instead turn to space heaters, time to talk about using them safely. They're great at warming up drafty spots around the house. And of course, you want one that heats well, but also want one that's safe. 12 on your side to Marilyn Mortz with space heater test results and some recommendations before you buy. On chilly days, a space heater can warm you up, but they can be dangerous. One third of all home heating fires involve space heaters, so safety matters. The safest space heaters turn off automatically if they become too hot or if they're knocked over. Consumer Reports ran a series of safety tests, like will the heater on high setting ignite cotton fabrics? Choosing the right space heater comes down to what you want it to do. You need to consider whether you're just trying to warm yourself up or whether you're trying to heat an entire room. Our tests show that not all models can do both. This mannequin with sensors measures how well a heater spot heats, and this chamber checks how well it warms up the whole room. So here are some recommendations. This Vornado was excellent for spot heating and safety. If you want to heat the whole room, CR recommends this Comfort Zone. Excellent in fire tests, but it is hotter to the touch than others. It's $50. If you have kids or pets and you're concerned about hotter surfaces, CR says this Lasco bladeless tower is a good alternative for $100. And some safety reminders. Never use extension cords with space heaters. Keep the heater on the floor and at least three feet away from flammables like bedding or drapes. If you're intrigued by those little personal size space heaters, consider this. Consumer Reports said they only did so-so in their spot heating tests. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, Maryland's report timed out just about right. It's that kind of weather now. Yes, we had the heater on last night, something that I didn't think we were going to have on just quite yet. Quite and, yet. you know, on, on the serious side, talking about space heaters and everything like that, now that we are getting into to cooler temperatures, mm -hmm. never, never, ever, ever use anything like a, a gas grill that's supposed to be outside, inside to heat, mm -hmm. nor the oven or stove, anything like that. Never, ever do that. So uh, also, Get your chimney and your and your furnace checked if you if you can now that we're starting. Well, and reminder too, so. as we approach the time change, good time to check the batteries and yeah. those smoke oh, detectors, yes. carbon monoxide monoxide detectors. Yes. Right, Housekeeping. and once again, time change is going to be next weekend, the the first weekend of uh, November. All right, uh, sunsets. Yeah, they have been spectacular the past couple of evenings. Just they're timeless, gorgeous. We're going to have another beautiful one tonight. So if you are heading out this evening, going to a football game. Uh, yeah, it's just going to be fantastic, and the sunset's going to be. Every Every bit as nice as well. Beautiful clear skies out there. So the humidity remains extremely low. We still have this nice northwesterly flow. We're going to have another breezy day today with northwesterly winds about 15, 20 miles per hour, maybe a little bit gusty at times. Not quite up to uh, wind advisory criteria, but it's going to be on the, the on the verge of that and watch it with any sort of uh, burning outdoors. And this is just going to remain the case throughout uh, tonight, tomorrow as well. But then notice by Sunday, even though the numbers are still low, we are going to start to see the flow switch around off of the Gulf of Mexico. So then late Sunday, this is early Sunday morning, obviously, and then late Sunday, we're going to have more humidity. It will start to increase throughout the day, but we're not going to be on the humid side. However, by Monday morning, we're going to be noticing the humidity a little bit more, and that's going to set the stage for some 
potential rain chances by the middle of then of next week. There's that huge, huge storm system that that's actually helping to pump in with that counterclockwise flow. The cooler air in here, big rain producer, obviously in the uh, well, just about covering the eastern half. The United States centered right there about uh, well, about St. Louis or uh, western Kentucky. All right. Talking about dew points, how they will start to come back in here by Sunday night into the first part of next week, and then we'll get up into the 60s. So, yes, you will notice the humidity somewhat, but like I said, that is going to help to feed some uh, showers and maybe even a couple of thunderstorms with the next front that's going to move on through here. So, jumping on in through the weekend, nothing's going on, nothing going on through Sunday. Monday, a couple of more clouds around here. Tuesday, you see a few clouds that moved on through, and then by Wednesday, and now long range computer models seem to be pretty much in agreement that this is going to be coming through the next front sometime on Wednesday, one a little bit earlier in the day, one a little bit later in the day. But it is going to be on Wednesday. We'll have a couple of showers and even a few thunderstorms around here. Some may linger into Thursday then, and we will get some cooler temperatures moving in here Thursday. And then it looks like even further down the road by next Sunday, right after the time change perfect timing with this we got another strong front moving on through here so obviously that's still a week away but it's today for sure 70 sunny beautiful just get outside and enjoy it open up the windows not this morning a little too chilly for that 75 for a high temperature we'll actually be down a couple of notches compared to the past couple of days breezy and then for trick-or-treating on sunday Milder temperatures, so starting off about 82 degrees, that's going to be our high on Sunday by 8 o'clock, 71 and 66. So it won't cool down as quickly, and so it's not going to be really nice. I mean, humidity is still going to be low, uh, low enough to be pleasant on Sunday evening. Then it comes back in here on Monday. Notice how the low temperatures are going to be staying in the 60s, and then the next front moves through middle part of next week. Oh, so the, the big picture here, uh, what I can tell is what you're telling us is the cold front frequency is starting to pick up a little mm -hmm. bit. Yep. Yep. Great fall pattern. Had one this week. It looks like Wednesday and then Sunday of next week. Okay. Not bad. We'll take it. And the time change. Yes. <laughs> the way we so, fall so back. So many things. That's, that is blessings to this crew, yes. especially yep. the yes. producers, directors, everybody behind the scenes uh, as well. 452, about 56 degrees. And coming up after the break, a look at two new thrillers to check out if you're looking for something to watch this Halloween weekend. Oh, by the way, I finished Squid Game yesterday. What do you think? Oh, really? I was surprised. Really? I was really surprised. Yeah. Interesting ending. All right, lottery numbers. Pick three, zero, seven, four, Fireball one. Your daily four numbers are six. 682 Fireball 3. Cash 5, 8, 9, 14, 17, 22. And your Texas 2 step 12, 18, 30, 35. Bonus ball 5. Autobiographical series is out on Netflix today. ABC's Jason Nathanson has the latest on what's happening in Hollywood. If you're looking for a scare this Halloween weekend, Last Night in Soho might be the movie for you. It stars Annie Taylor Joy and Thomas and McKenzie as women living in the same area of London in different time periods connected by tragedy. Writer director Edgar Wright says he wanted to explore the phrase if these walls could talk. I mean, there's a line in the movie that Diana Rigg says where she says, this is London, somebody's died in every room in this whole city. And I, I believe that. Yeah. I really believe that. <laughs> Last Night in Soho is out this weekend, only in theaters. What's going on? We found a part of a man in the woods today. Or perhaps you're looking for something a little more beastly. Antlers stars Carrie Russell as a teacher in a small town. Her young student's family becomes possessed by an ancient, terrifying spirit. That's also only in theaters. If you're looking for something a little more grounded, Colin in Black and White is the much-talked-about autobiographical series about former NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick in the early years that shaped his worldview and activism. Kaepernick co-created it with Oscar-nominated director Ava DuVernay. Colin in Black and White is out today on Netflix. From first lady to sitcom star, Michelle Obama will guest star in the upcoming final season of Blackish. She'll play herself, but that's all we know. And speaking of Blackish, Emmy-nominated star Tracy Ellis Ross is 49 today. While Stranger Things star Winona Ryder is 50. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now, it's 4.57 and it's about 55 degrees out there. Still to come, the latest on President Biden's domestic policy plan, plus some of your other morning headlines. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guy. There's a look there at Loop 410 and McCullough. Things are moving there, but we will be checking in with Stephen Cavazos shortly. Live from Case at 12. 
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Made entrance the door overnight only to be shot. What we're learning about the incident that happened over on the west side. And firefighters busy overnight with a house fire just north of downtown. Details still to come. If you like chillier weather, you are a happy camper this morning. Mid 50s here in town. Really cold in the Texas Hill Country. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning, everybody. Last Friday of the month, it is October 29th. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. And yes, I think everybody on this crew has been happy with the weather so far. Oh, it's really nice. Jacket weather for sure. Maybe a sweater. Mike's here with more on some fashion tips for your Friday. <laughs> well, uh, you've got your jacket handy. You're going to need it the next couple of mornings at least because we have some more nice, beautiful fall weather in store. This great weather is just going to uh, continue on. 53 degrees right now in town. Two point stands at 38. So bone dry air out there. In theory, we could drop at that far. We're not going to, but still think we're going to be uh, down into the upper 40s when it's all said and done this morning. And then nice big warm up up to 75 hit 78 yesterday. So down just a couple of notches compared to uh, yesterday. And as far as the aquifer and yesterday's reading, it did go up six tenths of a foot and the allergens mold, juniper, moderate ragweed is on the low side. Don't forget tonight if you are not going to be watching Go downtown Day of the Dead parade and it's going to be beautiful for that. Temperatures as we uh, start the parade are going to be right around 74 degrees. It gets going about 8 o'clock or so. So if you're heading on down there and then yeah, take a jacket 65 by uh, 9 o'clock and a uh, nice breeze out of the northwest. It'll settle down just a little bit once the the sun goes down. The wind will so uh, 40s in the hill country right now. 42 at Kerrville, 47 Rio Medina and Castroville is at 48 degrees. Yeah, nice crisp morning and clear chilly out there. Beautiful sunshine, still breezy. Very nice day today. Another just fantastic day with the low humidity and weekend. Same thing. Great tomorrow. Chilly morning, chilly on Sunday, although we're going to be a little bit milder on Sunday. It's still going to be fantastic trick or treating weather, but you know, kind of knows it won't be as low humidity, not humid, but it's starting to come back in here throughout the day uh, Sunday and then overnight into Monday. Yes, Monday morning we will definitely notice the humidity to start off the month of November and then we got a front moving through here by midweek and some more rain chances by the middle of next week. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos, is that uh, accident still hanging around here? Thankfully not, Mike. As we get the morning rolling here, we have good news to talk about. The roads are pretty light right now, so grab that hot cup of coffee and get your day started because uh, right now 35 at Wiener does show lights traffic very quiet there off I 10. You can see we probably have just one folk, uh, one person traveling down there should say 37 at Jones Avenue. A little dark right now, but keep in mind we know it is very early on during this early morning newscast, so more people will get out on the roadways as the day starts to pick up, but we are starting off pretty nice. Now we did have an incident here that took place off 35 northbound right at Judson Road. Mike was talking about it uh, that has since cleared out, so that's not going to be causing any issues for that early morning drive as we get ready to get the day going here in these inbound times are green across the board. Let's take a look coming in from I-10 and Bernie. We're looking at 25 minutes at this hour. If you're traveling to San Antonio, the downtown San Antonio area and 281 uh, from Bolverde, we're looking at 26 minutes, 26 on 35 from New Braunfels. So again, we have some good news to talk about this morning as we are heading off and driving off into the weekend. Loop 410 at McCullough looks like it's getting a little bit busier there, but pretty dark at US 90 at Loop 1604. Coming up in the next few minutes, we will have some construction spots you don't want to be spooked out for. So that's coming up in the next few minutes, guys. Thank you, Stephen. A knock on the door ends with a man being shot. Now police are trying to figure out who did it. It happened just before 11 last night on West Commerce near Northwest 19th Street. Jonathan Cotto joins us live with the details. And Jonathan, do police have any information on the suspect? Stephanie, police tell us the suspect did take off, but let's take a look at what that scene looked like. Police responded to this scene on West Commerce Street, not too far from Our Lady of the Lake University, close to 11 o'clock last night. Now, police say the victim, a man in his 30s, was inside with two other people when there was a knock at the door. They say his door was chained, but the suspect managed to get his gun inside, firing off a shot, hitting the victim in the chest. Now, homicide detectives were on scene. San Antonio Fire 
fire department, along with EMS, also responded. Now, the victim was taken to University Hospital, where police tell us he was later pronounced dead. Now, as for the suspect, again, he did take off, but they're trying to investigate what motivated the suspect to go to this home and kill him. Now, the case remains under investigation. We'll keep you updated as more information is made available. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, investigators trying to figure out what caused a fire at an abandoned house overnight north of downtown. It happened just after midnight on Pasadena east of I-10. And when firefighters got there, the house was engulfed in flames. They were able to get it knocked down and no one was injured. Officials say there weren't any signs that anybody lived at that house. Damages are estimated to be around $20,000. A chaotic scene yesterday afternoon after a shooting on the city's west side that caused two north side ISD schools to be placed on a modified lockdown. Police say there are two incidents they're investigating. First was a shooting on Marbach, not far from John Jay High School. When officers got to the scene, more than 100 people were running in different directions. So far, they've only been able to confirm that one person was shot, but they believe there may have been a second person who was hit. Then. During the chaos, police say a driver leaving the scene hit a pedestrian not involved in the shooting. The man is expected to be okay. The driver will be charged with failure to stop and render aid once they're caught. Meanwhile, the shooting remains under investigation. In your morning headlines, President Biden has reached a historic framework with Democrats in Congress on his domestic policy plan, but he must still nail down votes from a few skeptical fellow Democrats. The president announced his plans at the White House yesterday after traveling to Capitol Hill earlier in the day to pitch House Democrats. The proposal is now $1.75 trillion. He wanted a deal before he left for global summits in Europe, but votes are still a ways off as lawmakers push for more. U.S. Justice Department discussing paying thousands of dollars to each child and parent separated under the Trump era practice of splitting families at the border. The Wall Street Journal first reported the government was considering payments of about $450,000 to each person affected. About 5,500 children were separated from their parents under the practice. In Austin, firefighters performed a daring aerial rescue of two men stuck on the scaffold 174 feet in the air yesterday morning. The only way they could reach the stranded workers was from above, which meant the rescuers had to be 300 feet above the ground. Everyone was able to keep calm despite some language barriers. The Austin assistant fire chief said the end result was success with both workers safely on the ground and their rescuers as well. Yeah, it did get really windy again yesterday. Yeah, it's very scary. Right now, 507, about 55 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, have you heard a fan favorite coming back to McDonald's. And sorry, Prime members, we'll tell you why Amazon plans to take away free deliveries from Whole Foods. And taking a look outside with live cam, nice and cool. Don't forget your jacket today. I went to a game and only packed my hoodie, and I was wishing I had my extra jacket with me. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 511. In your morning consumer headlines, there will no longer be free Whole Foods deliveries for Amazon Prime members. This week, Amazon started adding on a $9.95 delivery charge to all orders. Whole Foods says the fee is to cover costs for delivery equipment and technology and helps the chain avoid having to raise grocery prices. The McRib coming back to McDonald's menus on Monday. The popular barbecue sandwich first debuted in Kansas City back in 1981, making this its 40th anniversary. The sandwich is only being offered for a limited time at participating locations officially starting Monday, but unofficially some McDonald's locations have reportedly brought it back early. Mm, I like other McDonald's sandwiches. Other not not rib. rib, just saying. Got it. All right, so one more for somebody else. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Time now, 512 and about 55 degrees out there. Coming up next, how Facebook is trying to compete with Apple with its newest gadget and its newest name. Today we're kicking off breakfast with heart-healthy Quaker Oats. Good call. Good call. Real good call. Breeze. Pass the oats. Apples and cinnamon. Got it, baby! Hey, wait for the bus! Unacceptable, boss! what I do? Illegal use of window! He gets FOMO. 
fear of missing out. Penalty reversed. The result of the play is breakfast. Quaker Oats, a super trusted superfood. Always a good call. When they're sick, they get comfortable anywhere and spread germs everywhere. Wherever they rest, protection. Nothing kills more viruses, including the COVID-19 virus, on more surfaces than Lysol disinfectant spray. Lysol, what it takes to protect. Mr. Clean Magic Eraser for a deep down hygienic clean. Magic Eraser removes the messes you see, as well as more of the dirt and grime you don't. All you do is wet, squeeze, and start erasing dirt and grime all around the house. Try Mr. Clean Magic Eraser for a deep down clean. 515 on your Friday morning. Meta, the company formerly known as Facebook as of this week, is reportedly working on a new smartwatch to compete with the Apple Watch. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Facebook's next big thing may be introduced as early as next year. As Facebook changed its name to Meta, we're also getting a glimpse of the company's new smartwatch. The leaked image has a notch with a built-in camera, a feature not available on the Apple Watch. Google's mobile service is set to roll out end-to-end -end encrypted call services to users. It blocks anyone other than the parties communicating from accessing a conversation. Android phones using Google's mobile service will get it first. It also blocks spam. Finally, an audio upgrade for top-of-the-line Mercedes models. Starting next summer, buyers can get the Dolby Atmos 3D audio system in Mercedes Maybach and S-Class cars. That means 31 speakers scattered around the vehicle. Both models, though, have a six-figure price tag. So for the rest of us, nothing to see here, folks. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a happy Halloween. 516. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Things were busy earlier, but now it's not too bad. Yeah, and we're not seeing any of those cars out on the highways right now. You can see it's pretty quiet so far. I-10 uh, does show that we got a few folks getting out there this morning, but thankfully nothing big is going to cause any issues for this early, early morning drive. 30, 35 at Judson. There was a crash out here earlier. We showed you some road flares that were still lingering around, but those have since gone out. And right now the roads are open and nice uh, time to enjoy that cup of coffee this morning. Uh, as you're getting your day started, but as we talked about some uh, work that's going to be going on throughout the upcoming days, uh, this is actually should say it's wrapping today. Pardon me, single lane closures there on the eastbound frontage road from Chase Hill Boulevard to Lock and Tear Parkway. It is going to be wrapping today. The uh, Texas has it listed from nine in the morning to three in the afternoon. That's some utility work going on over there. And as we take a jump a little bit more towards here on 1604, we see some signage installation that will lead to an alternating eastbound main lane closure. This is going to be from Stone Oak Parkway up into US 281. That will be starting tomorrow, but we'll be wrapping up on Halloween. That's October 31st from 9 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. Now let's take a jump down over here to I-10 where we do have some striping and barrier operations. Again, that should say it's wrapping today, but uh, it's been uh, leading to an alternating main lane closure in both directions from Greytown Road to File Road. Again, that's going to be wrapping today. It's been an overnight deal, 830 in the evening to 530 in the morning. So we're seeing a little bit of a buildup in that area, but that's what we saw yesterday. So we could still have some tech stock crews still wrapping up that project, but thankfully it's not going to cause any issues as we start getting more folks out there this morning. Again, 35 at Judson. It's what we like to see here. Traffic moving nice and smoothly, guys. Good news there. Thank you, Stephen. Question. Steven. Question. So yes. Facebook's now called Meta is apparently Meta. That's, that's that can be like the, the Willis Tower. Formerly Sears, Sears Tower, Tower. Yeah, which ah, it's like what's a Willis Tower It's like, oh, the old Sears Tower. So I think for, that's more of a conundrum for people in Chicago. I, I does anybody know what the meta the, and you said it run our test the guy meta world meta peace, peace. Mm -hmm. interesting yeah okay. that's uh, I think he changed it again though I just saw that documentary about malice in the palace yeah Fist, that's crazy Fist and pacers <laughs> and uh yeah, there was a lengthy interview. Anyway, we're way off topic. Way off topic. Oh, yeah, the old Facebook. Anyway, uh, beautiful moon out there. I saw it driving into work this morning. It's just about uh, a little less than halfway. It's going to continue to, uh, it's in the, the waning stage, and it's going to be just a nice little crescent on Halloween. Beautiful, and it's going to be good moon gazing weather the next couple of evenings because of all the clear skies and the fantastic sunrise. We've got the clear skies out there right now. Yesterday, we did hit 78 degrees, some mid and upper 80s off to the west and southwest, 88 in Catula. And then today it's going to be down just a little bit, um, say two, three degrees lower than yesterday. Actually, a couple of notches below normal, 75, 77 Lackland, Von Orme, and 75 up in portions of uh, northern Bear County. The humidity remains very, very low. That's why it is so nice out there. We have these pleasant afternoons, and that will remain today, tomorrow, and most of the day on Sunday. But Sunday it's going to start to come back in here here 
during the day. It's not like it's going to be humid or you're going to be sweating, anything like that, but you just kind of notice a bit more humidity. But then overnight into Monday, yeah, wake up Monday morning, we're going to see more humidity uh, hanging around here, and that will then eventually help out with some showers by the middle of the week. So long range computer models. Well, obviously there's nothing going on this weekend, but uh, clear skies around here. Monday, uh, notice how a couple of clouds pass by during the day. Same thing on Tuesday with the extra humidity and then more clouds on Wednesday. And as the next front approaches and the exact timing of this is still a little bit uh, in question, but it is going to be during the day, some point either early or late in the day. Uh, some long range models aren't really in agreement on that, but it's come through on Wednesday and then we'll have some rain overnight, maybe lingering into the early morning hours of Thursday. And it looks like we're actually going to have another front then in behind that by next weekend. So here's what's going on right now. That huge low center part of the country, and that's what's keeping us in this northerly flow, keeping us nice and cool. So that is eventually going to get on out of here. We sort of flatten out a little bit, and that's why temperatures by Sunday and going into the first of the week are going to get a little bit milder and kind of uh, blase weather, if you will, by Monday, Tuesday. Then we get this next wave, this next front coming on through here, this kind of kink in the upper level uh, steering winds. That will be the middle part of next week. Then as we go into next weekend, and there's that next uh, trough, which is going to be developing out there. That's what's going to send the next front through here. It looks like by sometime on Sunday of uh, next week. So that would be the 7th. Yeah. 70 at noon today, sunny skies and then a high temperature. We are going to make it up to 75. Good looking day, a little on the breezy side. Winds out of the northwest still about 15, 20, 25 miles per hour. Chilly again tomorrow morning, chilly on Sunday morning, up to 82 on Sunday. So it's going to be very nice. Like I said, we'll notice the humidity starting its return on Sunday. Still a really nice day. Great for trick or treating Monday. Yeah, it's going to be a different story when you uh, head off to work in school and then next front comes through on Wednesday. Very nice. Yep. All that we asked for. Ah, and a great <laughs> end to October. Yeah. All we asked for and more. 521, <laughs> about 55 degrees. And coming up next in Spotlight News, a look at Lady Gaga's new role in House of Gucci. Hey, real quick, want to mention that uh, President Biden has arrived at the Vatican to meet with the Pope. He's head of the G20 summit that happened just a short time ago. A lot of numbers this morning. Pick three, zero, seven, four, fireball one, daily four, six, two, eight, two, fireball three. Cash five, eight, nine, 14, 17, 22. And your Texas two step, 12, 18, 30, 35, bonus ball five. We are getting our first look at Lady Gaga in the new movie House of Gucci, plus Benedict Cumberbatch playing a real-life Russian spy. And as the Halloween holiday weekend begins, a song that's fitting for the occasion. CNN's David Daniel has this morning's Hollywood Minute. I don't consider myself a particularly ethical person, no! but I am fair. I subscribe to unconventional punishment. Lady Gaga takes charge in the new trailer for House of Gucci. Director Ridley Scott's juicy fashion murder drama is based on the true story of Patrizia Reggiani, who hired a hitman to kill her ex-husband, the former head of the Gucci fashion empire. House of Gucci opens in theaters November 24th. Let's begin with, you, you take a deep breath. Variety reports that Benedict Cumberbatch will play real-life Russian spy Alexander Litvinenko in the upcoming HBO limited series, London Grad. The former FSB agent and Kremlin critic was killed by poisoning with a radioactive isotope in England in 2006. Here's a song you can really sink your teeth into this Halloween. Kesha's mom, PB Siebert, who's written songs for some of music's top names, is releasing her haunting early 80s tune, Vampire, for the first time. Siebert discovered the recording of the spooky song in a dusty box in her basement this year. The dead live in Hollywood. I'm David Daniel. Okay. Yeah, time now, 526 and about 55 degrees out there. We have much more heading your way in the next half hour, including a look at No Shave November. Stephen Cavazzo standing by with how the guys here at KSAT are participating starting next week, and more importantly, how you can help. Plus, our Halloween fun continues this morning on GMSA. Still to come, we're going to take a look around a nearby hotel that has a lot of people talking.
And the FDA expected to grant authorization of Pfizer's COVID vaccine for kids. Just ahead, what parents need to know. Millions of American kids may soon be eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. The latest on vaccinations for younger ones still to come. A local man has found out that words really can hurt. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That man is facing charges for what police say he wrote online. I'll tell you more about it. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 55 degrees. Definitely pack a jacket if you have to stay outside for a while. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday the 29th. Halloween weekend is finally here. Yes, and the weather is appropriate, so we're very happy about that. Mike says more fronts are on the way. Yeah, way down the road. Uh, looks like maybe one, if not two, next week over the course of the next uh, about, uh, say, seven to ten days. But short term this morning, just fantastic. Got the camera swung around, waiting for that sun to come up. Won't be coming up for about another oh, two hours at least, but it is going to be a beautiful, beautiful sunrise out there. As far as the uh, the water vapor imagery still got some really dry air not only down here at the surface but also upstairs and so that's why we're going to have a spectacular blue skies again today and great sunset same thing tomorrow pretty much same thing on Sunday as well mold is moderate same thing juniper ragweed is on the low side and throughout the day 70 at noon 75 for a high temperature can't beat it, it is going to be kind of breezy wind out of the northwest at 15 to 25 miles per hour and make sure if you are heading off to a game tonight down to the Day of the Dead parade. Take a jacket because it'll cool off quickly once the sun goes down. Closer look at the weekend forecast. Can you believe last weekend of October already? November is going to start off a little bit different. Details in just a few minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's the latest, sir? I'm not ready for October to end, Mike, I just know. yet. Feels good right now outside, uh, but you know, we're talking about the roads. Things have been quiet so far, but we want to bring your attention to 281 South at Loop 410. Let's take a closer look. Our friends at TransGuide just brought this shot up for us, and what it is, what we're looking at is actually a stalled vehicle. You can see that we do have some flashing lights out there, and that could be a TxDOT Hero truck working to assist that stranded driver, but hopefully that uh, car can get out of the way pretty soon because we're about half an hour or so away from people, more people getting out on the roadways. Taking you right to the map, let's pinpoint where that's at. It's off Loop 410 eastbound at McCullough Avenue. Still very early. We're not seeing a lot of buildup of traffic because of this stalled vehicle. But again, it's really early. You don't want to have any trouble out on the highways when the sun has not come out yet or in the highways in general. So make sure you're checking those vehicles and tire pressures as well, especially with that weather change. We did have a few stalls yesterday. Let's take a wider look at the map. It does show a lot of green on the screen. However, we are seeing a little bit of a build up there off I-10. Now we did talk about some construction that should be wrapping up momentarily. Uh, that doesn't look like it's going to impact any of the times if you're heading into Seguin at this hour. But if you're driving in from Seguin, guess what? It's still pretty green. I-10 shows that we got 30 minutes right now to the downtown San Antonio area. We're looking at 22 from 87 and Lavernia. And if you're traveling in from Flotusville, we have 28 minutes on 37. So it's been a beautiful morning outside and a beautiful start on the roads. We'll watch this all closely and have more updates on construction spots coming up in the next few minutes, guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man's fingers have gotten him in a lot of trouble. They say he was messaging what he thought was a teenage girl trying to have sex with her. Katrina Weber is live near downtown with more on the arrest. And Katrina, it sounds like this involved an undercover officer. Well, that is exactly right. The arrest affidavit says that police were monitoring an Internet site that's known for prostitution and child sexual offenses when the suspect began communicating with what he thought was a 16 year old girl. Well, things did not end well for 46 year old Patrick Ramirez. He was arrested yesterday on a charge of online solicitation of a minor. The affidavit says he first got on investigators' radar last month when he began messaging the undercover officer. It says he was aware that the person he was talking to was supposed to be only 16, but police say he then made plans this week to meet up with that girl and have sex. At the last minute, they say Ramirez canceled. Still, police went to his job and arrested him yesterday. And the affidavit says that he told police he, he suspected that the person he was talking to was not real, but he says he was role playing. Still, the charges that he's facing are very real. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 534, a man is dead this morning following a West Side shooting. Happened just after 1030 at a home on West Commerce, not far from South Zarzamora. 
That is where San Antonio police say a man heard someone knocking on his door when he went to answer that person opened fire, hitting the victim in the chest. He was taken to a hospital where he later died. Police are still looking for the shooter this morning. Today is the final day of early voting in the Texas Constitutional Amendment elections. Voters will decide on eight proposed constitutional amendments. The polls open up at 8 a.m. and you can find a list of early voting locations on our website at kset.com. You can also find information about each of the proposed amendments online as well. Election day is on Tuesday. We begin your Friday with more good news on the fight against COVID-19. New cases and hospitalizations are finally on the decline all across the country, but there is more work to do and more vaccines to administer. That includes children. 28 million more of them may be very soon eligible for the vaccine. Reed Benyon reports. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration poised to grant emergency use authorization on Friday for Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. If the FDA grants authorization, Pfizer can start shipping a child version of the vaccine to sites across the nation. But the CDC has to greenlight the child version before kids can start getting shots. The agency's advisory panel is scheduled to meet Tuesday to address that. Dr. Anthony Fauci stressing the importance of the vaccine for kids. I do feel it's important to vaccinate children. All you need to do is go to the pediatric hospitals around the country. More kids are getting infected. And as more kids get infected, some of them, maybe a small proportion, are going to have a serious outcome. And while recent polling shows many parents are hesitant to get their kids the shot, New York's governor says there's a chance the vaccine could become mandatory in public schools in her state if infection rates increase. That is a possibility. It's on the table. Also in New York, major pushback in the Big Apple over the vaccine mandate for city employees set to take effect Friday evening. Here are concerns. New York firefighters protesting the city's plan to put employees on unpaid leave if they don't show proof of at least one dose. Officials bracing for possible mass staffing shortages. As a result of unvaccinated staff, up to one-fifth of the city's fire companies could be closed, according to a source familiar with the situation. And a fifth of the department's ambulances may go out of service. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Happening right now, over 20 million people are under alerts for coastal flooding and a big storm is headed towards the northeast U.S. According to the National Weather Service, they're expected to be one of the worst tidal flooding events we've had in the past 10 or 20 years for a lot of locations, including the Chesapeake Bay region. Baltimore and Washington are expected to be hit the hardest. The flooding is expected to peak today and linger through tomorrow. So if you're traveling out there, check ahead. During this time, two to four feet of coastal flooding is likely. Last time conditions were this bad was during Hurricane Isabel way back in 2003. The first six months of this year had the largest increase of highway crashes and fatalities in at least 15 years. New data shows more than 20,000 people died from traffic related deaths from January to June. That represents an 18 percent increase over last year. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the sharp increase could be connected to the number of miles vehicles traveled, which increased by about 13 percent. But other data shows more motorists are speeding and driving without seatbelts than before the pandemic. The countdown continues with the Day of the Dead San Antonio River Parade. If you want to watch it in person, you have to buy a ticket. You can find a link for that on kset.com, but Stephanie Jimenez and Steve Spreester will be there to help share the celebration on your TV right here on KSAT. Broadca broadcast kicks off tonight at 8. Alicia Barrera will also be there giving us a close look at the colorful and elaborate floats. And break a leg to our crew down there on the San Antonio Riverwalk tonight. Yeah, the weather's going to be very beautiful. 538, 55 degrees. And get ready to throw out your razor, guys. Okay, so after the break, we're talking about No Shave November and what you can do to help cancer research. Outside with Live Cam, very chilly this morning. Mike's full weekend forecast is coming up.
And we are just days away from November, and that means some of the men here at Kesa will start to look a little different. Very excited about not shaving starting well after today. Yeah. Uh, no Shave November has been a long-standing tradition here at KSAT, all in an effort to raise funds towards cancer research, treatment, and prevention. And Stephen Cavazos is here to tell us more. And Stephen, what makes this year stand out? Well, we're really excited about this, uh, you know, getting ready to ditch the razor and get to uh, grow in our beards out. Yeah, and you can expect a lot of scruff end here here on KSAP, but more importantly, more nonprofits are going to be benefiting this year, a total of 10 to be exact, and this month-long journey is about to get growing. No Shave November has been a tradition for many years where people usually ditch the trip to the barber or salon and grow out their hair, but that tradition underwent its own transformation. In 2007, the Hill family of Chicago lost their father, Matthew Hill, to colon cancer. It was sometime after the family started a Facebook group with just a few followers. Their mission was simple, to raise money for cancer research, prevention and education. Now during No Shave November, that's, that's during the month of November that is, and since then over $12 million has gone towards those efforts and the cost just keeps growing around the country. Last year, the men here at KSAD put down their razors for and let their facial hair grow. There's a few of our guys there. There's Mark looking a little scruffy there. Now we did raise close to $10,000 and ranked fifth in the country in terms of groups. Now this is where we hope to exceed that goal. So I believe that we're going to get started here again on Monday. Now each of the 10 organizations also focuses on a different arena of cancer, but they all share the same mission and that's to end cancer for all. Now you can read more about that at KSAT.com and we'll have more on our efforts coming up on GMSA at nine. Mark stuff. Yeah, we're going to talk much more about that. I couldn't help. I almost cut myself shaving this morning. I was grinning about <laughs> excited about day. it. And I was doing kind of a gentle, I, I wanted to get a head start, so I was like, I'm just dare, barely taking yeah. off the tops uh, of the whiskers. I was happy to not do it, but I'm hoping for a few more whiskers this year. I, I no, you know, it's for a good cause, but yeah. whatever you can do yeah. is great. Yeah, we'll yes. see what happens. Yeah, N none of us are going to look like this. <laughs> well, no. you never I know. Mean, I mean, I like this, but I really want all the, we got him on the he's got, good, he's, yeah, got, he's, he's got, got a got, full yeah. head of he's hair. He's got good hair. There. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, maybe like uh, if we start this November and wait till next November. There you the go. Beard, yeah. The beard will be all the way out there. And off. <laughs> I wish. Stephen, thank you very much and appreciate you spearheading this year's No yeah, Shave right. November here at KSAT 12. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Time now, 544, and it's about 55 degrees. Oh, things are about to get spooky here on GMSA. After the break, we'll take you inside the Magnolia Hotel over in Seguin. If you're still looking for a pumpkin for Halloween, look at this little baby here. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's the cutest thing in the world. Kim's here from the San Antonio Humane Society. Oh, that little face. I know. Oh, that face. Look at the baby. Look at the baby. And the puppy breath. Oh, Mike. It, oh, my gosh. You just fall in love with That's better than extra Parker. candy trick-or-treating. Who's I this little know. baby? <laughs> this is sweet little Parker, who's a two-month-old terrier mix who um, came to us to the shelter just a day or two ago. And so he is ready to find his forever home. Definitely a little puppy. Um, probably not going to get too much bigger than this um, by looking at the paws, but lots of puppy. Yeah, Lots short of coat, easy to take care of, yes, and the best kind. <laughs> oh my god, and just that face will just melt you. So, yeah. what y'all got going on? So, we have volunteer opportunities. Um, if you want to volunteer with us, you can go to our website. We've got a couple of different informational sessions that will be taking place over the next uh, couple of Wednesdays. So, please come on out, volunteer. We need um, we need your help. And that's great for high schoolers, oh especially gosh, when yes. you have to get that on your resume and everything. Yes, so, it's a perfect resume thing. Yep, and absolutely. Add it to your resume, and you get to take care of puppies and kittens. So head on out there, San Antonio Humane Society at 4804 Fredericksburg Road, or give them a call at 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Well, it is holiday, uh, Halloween weekend, rather. If you're looking for something spooky to do, the Haunted Magnolia Hotel in Seguin is considered the place to be. So it's less than an hour away from San Antonio and the bed and breakfast is full of history and spirits. The owners, Jim and Aaron Getty, say it was not just a hotel back in the 1800s, but also a prison and an illegal place to sell alcohol. They bought it after seeing it on a list of endangered buildings in Texas. Their goal, to restore and preserve the hotel for future generations. And as soon as we walked at the door, we fell madly in love with her. It's a great place. We do have spirits, but they're all very kind. There's nothing, you know, creepy or demonic or anything like that. We're here. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, they <laughs> offer guided tours during the day. Uh, you can spend the night and investigate on your own. Tomorrow they will have a free open house from 10 to 2. And ahead on GMSA at 6, we'll tell you about some of the ghosts who call that place home. Very interesting. And I was looking at a camera off of 281. Looks like there's flashing lights out yep. there, Stephen. Yeah, we do have that stalled vehicle still out there here off Loop 410. We're getting the shot at 281 South, though, at Loop 410 West. Uh, yeah, we do have a TxDOT Hero truck looking like they're trying to assist that driver, get them out of the way. So obviously it does not impact traffic a little bit later this morning. But let's take a look at the map right now. We are seeing uh, not really any buildup there, if any at all, off Loop 410 Eastbound and McCullough Avenue, where that stalled vehicle is detected. But as you just saw those flashes, lights. That is a TxDOT Hero truck working to assist that driver. Make sure that you move over or slow down when you see those flashing lights. Let's take a jump up here to 1604. Now, obviously, we know that this has been a big construction spot. Uh, there is going to be or there has been bridge widening, widening construction. That is it's had led to an alternating full full closure of the turnarounds right at Kyle Seal Parkway uh, in both directions. Now, this has been current, but should be wrapping up on Sunday, November 30th. And it's crazy to think that we're talking about November already but we're about a month away from that completion. It has been going on from nine in the morning to three in the afternoon. Usually we start to see a big build up there when morning uh, the morning really starts to get going. But right now it's still pretty green on the screen. We do have that red still off I-10 eastbound. That is some construction out near Graytown and File Road that should be hopefully wrapping up pretty soon. I'll check with our friends at TransGuy to find out if there's any delays. But if you're traveling out there, just be safe. And if you're traveling here in uh, this particular direction at TransGuy, make sure that, again, you follow the rules of the road. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Very That's quickly, cool. check out Russell Rush on YouTube, the DJ. He d explores like haunted places. Oh, yeah. And this one is down at the bottom. And he said, workers there don't go. He was on SA Live yesterday. Uh -huh. So they don't go down in the basement. They, yeah. And it showed <laughs> video actually of one of the folks with him investigating. Yeah. And her hair gets pulled by a ghost. Creepy. And it's on video. Oh, Ooh. my Ooh. goodness. Yeah. Anyway, hey. Our folks here have competition over in Katy, and I love it. Grateful for Dead Halloween displays. Like the play on words for the Grateful Dead. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. It's going to be a fantastic sunrise this morning, and uh, we've got temperatures 40 right now in Kerrville. So maybe in your backyard out there in the Hill Country, it's already down in the 30s. 52 Rock Springs, uh, 54 Rock Springs, pardon me, Fredericksburg at 52. Nice flow out of the northwest. It's going to keep things nice and dry around here. So dry air does not hold the heat in, and then it heats up rather quickly. So that's why we're going to see about a 25, 30 degree swing in temperatures. I think it would drop into the upper 40s this morning and then get up to 75 later on today. But then notice how by Sunday the wind lines are going to start to come back in out of the southeast. So that will mark the start of the return of the humidity. It's still going to be pleasant on Sunday, but we you know, by late in the day you'll kind of it won't be as crisp. All right, there's that huge storm which is helping to keep us on the cool side. It's centered right there about, oh, say, western Kentucky and big rain, big rain producer over there in the eastern third of the United States. And that will continue to work its way on out of here. Upstream, there's nothing going on for us. And so we've got great weather for the next couple of days, all the, pretty much all the way through the weekend. So we're going to finish up October on a wonderful, wonderful note. 70 today at noon. Sunny skies and then a high temperature makes it up to 75. Five. Breezy today, wind out of the northwest, still about 15, 20 miles per hour, a little bit gusty at times. And tomorrow, going to be another chilly morning, get up to 79 in the afternoon, 82 on Sunday. Nice trick-or-treating weather, pleasant in the evening. It won't cool down as quickly when the sun goes down. And then we have a chance for some rain maybe by midweek with another front. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. We can't wait for Halloween. I know. 552, we'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, President Biden on an overseas trip this morning, meeting with Pope Francis before major summits with world leaders. We are live in Rome and in Washington as his economic agenda hangs in the balance at home. That's all coming up, plus much more right here on GMA. We'll see you soon. Well, ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, President Joe Biden is in Rome as we speak. We have the details about what he's calling a historic framework for a sweeping domestic policy package back here in the U.S. Plus, a new app aimed at keeping more litter off the streets. We'll tell you how it works right here in Texas. And after the break, San Antonio police trying to piece together a deadly overnight shooting. Jonathan Cotto is tracking the very latest there. So is Stephen on the roads. 
Uh, we've already seen a few incidents this morning. Flashing lights there at 281 at Loop 410 as traffic is building on the main lanes. The flashing lights up there on one of those elevated ramps. Let's check on your lottery numbers this morning. We'll review all of those for you. Pick three numbers, 074, Fireball 1. Your daily four numbers, 6282, Fireball 3. Cash five numbers, 8914, 1722. And Texas two-step, 12, 18, 30, 35, with a bonus ball of five. Good luck. More news, weather, and traffic is coming up right here on GMSA, closer to the top of the hour. San Antonio Police Department investigating a shooting that's left one man dead. Details about this case coming up next. President Biden's domestic agenda hanging in the balance as he begins his five day foreign trip. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam. It's nice and cool out there. Very nice for fall and appropriate for Halloween weekend. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Yes, indeed. Some South Texans are shivering this morning. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, the 29th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us and happy Halloween Eve 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 Eve. That's right. <laughs> Friday football coming up. Lots going on around South Texas this weekend, including Day of the Bread Dead Parade tonight. Mike mm -hmm. Ostrage is here with a look at your Friday and your weekend forecast. It's all about you now, Mike. Halloween Eve Eve, or you could just say the antepenultimate day of the month. So well, that's exactly. Yes. Yeah, so SA, anyway, SAT words and all. <laughs> it's, it's a great way. Uh, a beautiful fall weather, and we're actually a little bit below normal this morning, below the, the average low temperature. 52 here in town, 55 Port SA, and then look at that, 41 in Kerrville and 47 up the road in New Braunfels. Bone dry air, and this is the reason why we're having such beautiful weather. The keeps clear skies around here, doesn't hold the heat in very well, and then heats up very nicely, which is another reason why we've been seeing these uh, 25, almost 30 degree increases in temperatures the past couple of days. Mold and juniper are both moderate. Ragweed is on the low side, and throughout the rest of the morning, I still think we're going to be dropping down a couple couple more uh, degrees getting into the upper 40s here in town. It is going to be on the breezy side today. Wind is going to start to pick up a little bit and it's going to be out of the northwest about 15, 20, 25 miles per hour. A little gusty at times. 70 at noon, plenty of sunshine, then high temperature. We make it all the way up to 75, so down just a couple of degrees from yesterday's high temperature. No complaints though. And by the way, it is going to cool off fairly quickly tonight. So if you are heading off to a football game, do make sure you take a jacket. Don't do what Stephanie did last night and forget your jacket if you're going to be outside and uh, 70 right around kickoff and then down into the uh, 60s. Great also for the Day of the Dead parade and also trick or treating on Sunday. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos. So we had some problems earlier this morning. Anything big right now? Well, traffic getting moving, Mike. Uh, good way to start the week. Uh, the weekend as we were driving off into it. 35 at Judson. We did have a crash out there a little bit earlier that led to a few lanes being blocked, but that was around maybe 430 this morning that wrapped pretty quickly. Thankfully, Loop 410 at Jackson shows traffic picking up in these areas and same goes for Starcrest where we see more people getting out on the roadways, hopefully, hopefully grabbing that cup of coffee, maybe a morning taco and getting their day started here. I-10 at Crosswoods does show a pretty busy commute so far, but nothing too big that's going to cause any issues at this hour. We do have a stall still out there, though, off Loop 410 eastbound and McCullough Avenue. So again, make sure you're checking those vehicles. It looks like it could be a morning of trouble on the roads when it comes to stalls, though. Let's take you up here to I-35 southbound at Shirts Parkway, where another stall was detected. Now, the southbound lanes and northbound lanes of 35 tend to pick up around this time, but we're still seeing some green on those lanes, so that's some good news, but make sure Again, you are checking those vehicles, tire pressures, especially. Uh, let's take a wider look at the map. Now, we still have this particular stretch of traffic there in those eastbound lanes of I-10, and that is because uh, there was some construction. Again, I'll check with our friends at Transguide, find out if there's going to be any delays out there, but it looks like that could cause some issues if you're traveling up towards Seguin. But a quick look at these inbound times, no problems if you're coming into the downtown San Antonio from Seguin. Pretty much green across the board. No problems if you're commuting to the downtown San Antonio area at this hour. We'll continue to watch these roads close. So again, one last look, 35 at Judson. The morning is getting moving. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a shooting on the city's west side leaves one man dead and police searching for the suspect that was involved. Our Jonathan Cotto has more. 
Good morning. I'm located here at Public Safety Headquarters where police tell us the suspect involved in that shooting did manage to take off and are investigating the motive behind the shooting. Police responded to the scene on West Commerce Street, not too far from Our Lady of the Lake University, close to 11 o'clock last night. Police say the victim, a man in his 30s, was inside with two other people when there was a knock at the door. They say his door was changed, but the suspect managed to get his gun inside, firing off a shot, hitting the victim in the chest. Now, homicide detectives were on scene. San Antonio Fire Department, along with EMS, also responding. The victim was taken to University Hospital, where police say he was later pronounced dead on arrival. This case remains under investigation reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. President Biden's five-day two summit foreign trip is now underway after landing in Rome overnight. The president will meet with the Pope today and later attend the G20 meeting before heading to Glasgow, Scotland for a climate summit. The president left the U.S. with his domestic agenda still hanging in the balance after a flurry of activity on Capitol Hill yesterday. ABC's Faith Abube has more. A good morning. President Biden took a last minute trip to Capitol Hill to try to close the deal on his domestic agenda before his foreign trip. Even the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi told Democrats not to embarrass the president. However, it ultimately, President Biden left without a deal. Overnight, President Biden landing on the world stage just hours after House lawmakers punted a vote on the Senate passed bipartisan infrastructure bill. Too many no votes for the best to pass. Before jetting off, the president making a stop on Capitol Hill and then offering a new framework of the spending package. This framework includes historic investments in our nation and in our people. The $1.75 trillion framework includes money for free universal pre-K, extending the child tax credit, money for child and elder care, and expanding Medicare to cover hearing. There's also $500 billion for action on climate change, including tax incentives for electric cars and building charging stations. If you took any one piece of it, it would be trans transformative and historic. But progressive Democrats are bristling at what was left on the cutting room floor, like free community college and paid family leave. We put, put paid leave in and then all of a sudden at the last minute, somebody said it's out and I'm going to fight every single moment to try and get this back in. White House officials say they are confident that both the bipartisan infrastructure bill and the spending package will pass soon. However, they have yet to detail any kind of timeline. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. In your morning consumer headlines, Facebook changing its name to Meta to reflect its new company brand. CEO Mark Zuckerberg said it was time to change to encompass everything the company is doing in hopes to build. Yesterday, Facebook showed its vision for a metaverse with a series of concept videos. They included sending a holographic image of yourself to a real life concert, sitting around virtual meeting tables with remote colleagues or playing immersive games with friends. The metaverse, a term for a virtual universe often used in science fiction novels. The worldwide computer chip shortage is slicing billions from the bottom line at Apple. The company says it missed out on $6 billion worth of sales in the most recent quarter because of chip shortages. And it could be even worse during the holidays. And labor shortages slowing down Amazon's push to make one-day delivery the standard for Prime members. It says its increasing wages will mean $4 billion in additional labor costs for the company this quarter. And the Day of the Dead San Antonio River Parade is here. You can find a link for that on our website at kset.com. And kset will be out there to help you celebrate on your TV. The broadcast kicks off at 8 p.m. We are ready to go. But right now, 607, 55 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, a sex abuse scandal in the NHL. A coach resigns after reports surface of a player having abuse claims ignored. We'll have the details. We'll get to that story in a few minutes, but first, the Astros face the Braves tonight. Game three of the World Series. The two ball gloves currently tied at a game apiece as the series shifts to Atlanta. Game three set for 7.09. Uh, games four and five will be played in Atlanta. And our Spurs lose another close one, this time on the road at the hands of the Dallas Mavericks. Final score 104. 99 Mavericks win. Spurs continue their road trip tomorrow night at 7. They'll take on the defending champion, Milwaukee Bucks. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're in the 50s this morning. You will definitely need a jacket, especially if you're spending some time outdoors this morning. We'll be right back.
Welcome back at 611. New fallout from the sex abuse scandal rocking the NHL. The coach of the Florida Panthers has now resigned. As ABC's Mother Kassar Abdi reports comes one day after a player claimed the coach ignored his abuse claims 11 years ago. This morning, new fallout stemming from the sex abuse scandal involving the Chicago Blackhawks. Florida Panthers head coach Joel Quenville resigning overnight after an investigation revealed he had knowledge of a player's abuse allegations in 2010 when Quenville was coach of the Blackhawks. I buried this for 10 years, 11 years. On Wednesday, Kyle Beach coming forward as John Doe, the former Blackhawks player who sued the team, claiming its former video coach, Brad Aldrich, sexually assaulted him. Beach says he reported the assault to high-ranking team officials, including Quenville. I watched the entire leadership management group enter Joel Quenville's office to have a meeting about it. But Aldrich remained with the team through its Stanley Cup victory in 2010, only leaving after being given an ultimatum to undergo an investigation or resign. Aldrich maintains the encounter with then 20-year-old Beach was entirely consensual. In 2013, Aldrich was convicted on sex charges involving a minor. I felt so guilty that because I didn't do something, that it happened to this boy. But in the same breath, and over the next months, to get to this point, I owe him the greatest thanks ever, because he also gave me the power to come forward, to tell my story, to tell my truth. Quenville releasing a statement announcing his resignation, saying, quote, I want to express my sorrow for the pain this young man, Kyle Beach, has suffered. The Blackhawks general manager and vice president of the team resigned earlier this week as a result of the investigation. And the team was fined $2 million. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Friday morning time check, 6.13. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. It looks like there are problems at I-10 East. I would call this a problem. Uh, we do have some construction that we've been talking about off I-10 East. Right, at, This is a shop right at Loop 1604. Taking a closer look, you can see that we do have uh, some construction crews still out there. Now, keep in mind, TxDOT did uh, on their website says this construction should have wrapped by 5.30 this morning. We are almost an hour past that, so this is obviously causing some big delays. Our friends at Transkai providing us this shot. Let's take a look at the map. So that's not really going to be uh, hopefully there too much longer. But this particular stretch right there in those eastbound lanes is where we're seeing traffic build. And that's because striping and barrier operations have been ongoing. It's led to that alternating main lane closures between gray uh, with Graytown Road up to file road. But that should be wrapping today. But again, we are seeing a big stretch of traffic up there. Let's take a jump up here, though. We do have a stall to talk about off Loop 410 eastbound and McCullough Avenue. Looks like that could be an abandoned vehicle. It's still being reported on the TxDOT website. Not the only stall. We take another jump up here. We do have a stall off 281 southbound right at Bitters Road. I did see that there was a crash off 410. I'll have to check and see how that's going to be impacting traffic. But right now the issues seem to be minimum right now. I would say this is going to be the problem spot this morning. I 10 East. Hopefully this construction wraps pretty soon, guys. It is all Halloween Friday. Perfect time to bring back what Oscar Carrero and his, <laughs> I and his was just neighbors, that pose. the Denote family, <laughs> put together with their skeleton crew. And uh, we asked weeks ago, can you guys have GMSA being anchored by the skeletons? And, and they, they made delivered. it happen. delivered, yes. Hilarious. Love it. Now, and I asked, what the heck happened to the rest of my hair? <laughs> and I got an answer. I got an answer. Oh, you did? They said, budget cuts. <gasps> oh, that is funny. Well, yeah, I got I, just, a, I got a dog out of it, so. Yes, you did. And we just still don't know who's lurking <laughs> yeah. over my right shoulder. It, it's That's so... the producer. Oh, is it? <laughs> oh. Wow. There's Joy. Yeah. Yep. And there's my bowl haircut. And there we are yeah. back. Lots and of fun. Thank you again thank to you the Denote family in Stone Oak and their neighbor, Oscar Carrero, who put all that together with all sorts of fancy Photoshop and skills. Yes, it's very neat. I mean, the whole month we have enjoyed all the pictures. And, I mean, we're going to miss them, actually. Well, yeah. Here's yeah. the question, Mike goes to Page, what's their grand finale going to be this weekend? Oh. I don't know. I, I I don't know, but yeah, it's going to be it's going to be neat. So because we've got a, a one coming up from last year in just a second, and then at six thirty the latest. Can one, we so. grant them? Can we grandfather them into November and have the skulls grow beards? <laughs> I don't know. 
Yeah, or is it going to be something Thanksgiving related? And then, you know, we got Christmas coming around and all that stuff. So, yeah. all right, heading out to the school bus this morning. Uh, 48 degrees, clear and chilly. That's here in town. I think we're going to drop down a couple of more notches and then low 40s, maybe even some upper 30s in parts of the hill country. Then a beautiful, beautiful day, 75 degrees, kind of breezy once again this afternoon. So this is from last year. And who remembers E.T.? Aww. It's not phone home, but phone ghoul. And there's the dog, so still chasing the bike right here in the back of it. So, okay, so we've got, like I said, this year's coming up at, uh, at 6.30. All right, uh, no glow of the sunrise yet. It's still going to be about an hour and a half till the sun comes up. And 52 here in town, 51 Rio Medina, Bandera 48, 41 right now in Kerrville and uh, Balverde, as well as New Braunfels are both at 47 degrees. And again, here we... This is what we really got to be talking about, how the humidity is so low and these dew points are very, very low, dry humidity, and that means that allows temperatures to, to dip down, and that's why we are so nice and cool and crisp around here. And as far as uh, anything going on today, tomorrow, and Sunday, nothing. Just going to click the button all the way through this. A couple of clouds, though, come in here by Monday with the extra humidity. So we're going to start to see, or the beginning of the return of the humidity is going to be during the day on Sunday. It's not going to be humid, but you'll just notice that it won't be as dry in the afternoon. And then that's not going to allow temperatures to dry to drop down, pardon me, as quickly Sunday evening. So it's going to be really, really pleasant if you're out trick or treating or passing out candy to all the little ghouls and goblins. We've got um, more clouds on Tuesday and then Wednesday. This is the day when the front's going to be moving on through here. And it looks like it's going to be sometime mid to later afternoon on Wednesday, touching off a couple of showers. And that's going to be the case overnight and then into Thursday, we'll have a few of these leftover showers around here and then definitely some cooler temperatures come on in here uh, during the day on overnight to Wednesday, I should say into Thursday 70 today at noon, sunny skies, high temperature up to 75 degrees. Absolutely beautiful. And once again, speaking of trick or treating weather it's going to be really nice for it. We're going to have temperatures well, high of 82 on Sunday, and then we're going to be uh, right around 71 degrees at eight o'clock 66 by 10 o'clock. Hopefully the kids aren't still trick or treating at uh, 10 o'clock at night. And then uh, we've got the next front moving through Wednesday and Thursday. Maybe another one then by next weekend. And by the way, one o'clock today, the uh, Halloween special on SA Live. It's all of the retro classic monsters. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We had a makeup company doing makeup and all these different things. Fantastic. Makeup That's was so cool for all the, the ghouls and goblins. Yeah. We've seen the promo. You were yes. you're definitely a character actor when so. when necessary. In character. So I, I saw last year's mm -hmm. Halloween special, which was awesome. So yeah. I can't wait for this year's. Yeah. All the Frankenstein's, Dracula's, Mummies, Invisible Man. So. Oh. How do you never mind. <laughs> Six nineteen about fifty-five degrees. Which is <laughs> And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you about a historic site set to reopen in the heart of downtown. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story, brought to you by Toyota. Day of the Dead has been celebrated one way or another for thousands of years, and many of its current traditions are rooted in Aztec beliefs. One being we keep our ancestors alive by remembering them. That makes 2021 a special year. 500 years ago, the Spanish conquered the Aztecs. If your ancestors were indigenous or Spanish or both, this 500th anniversary is a time to remember them. 1521 changed everything. Want to pay your respects to the Aztecs this Day of the Dead? Here's an idea. Visit Brackenridge Park at sunset on November 2nd and leave some flowers at the statue of Guatemec, the Aztecs' last emperor. And happening today, historic structure set to reopen at the Alamo. The long barrack, which was first built roughly 300 years ago, has been closed to visitors to visitors at the preservation work. Now, early next year, a new exhibit will open inside the barrack to give visitors a closer look at history. You can read all about it over on KSET.com. Right now, 622, about 55 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 6, we're going to tell you about a new app that will let you tattle on litter bugs. And trans guide right now. I don't mean to chuckle. Right now, 10 at 1604, leftover construction and some current delays. Stephen will get you up to speed coming up right here on GMSA.
My DVT blood clot left me with questions. Was another around the corner? Or could I have a different game plan? I wanted to help protect myself. My doctor recommended Eliquis. Eliquis is proven to treat and help prevent another DVT or PE blood clot. Almost 98% of patients on Eliquis didn't experience another. And Eliquis has significantly less major bleeding than the standard treatment. Eliquis is FDA approved and has both. Don't stop Eliquis unless your doctor tells you to. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve or abnormal bleeding. If you had a spinal injection while on Eliquis, call your doctor right away if you have tingling, numbness, or muscle weakness. While taking Eliquis, you may bruise more easily, and it may take longer than usual for bleeding to stop. Seek immediate medical care for sudden signs of bleeding, like unusual bruising. Eliquis may increase your bleeding risk if you take certain medicines. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. What's around the corner could be a different game. Ask your doctor about Eliquis. A man is in jail for what San Antonio police say he did online. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it just ahead. Tonight, the Dia de los Muertos or the Day of the Dead San Antonio River Parade will certainly be coming to life and you don't want to miss out. Everything you need to know about this event coming up next. And you may have noticed in both those shots, our reporters are wearing jackets this morning. Bit of a hint for you this morning as we start our Friday. It's chilly out there, at least as cool as it was yesterday morning, if not more so. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is the last Friday of the month, October 29th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us and happy Halloween weekend. If you have plans, the weather will be nice. It will all weekend long, right, Mike? Yeah, for everything going on, we've got, uh, well, going to work and school today, uh, football tonight, the parade tonight. Then we've, you know, Saturday is going to be just get outside, you know, Take the TV outside if you're going to watch a college football. <laughs> Good idea. And then on Sunday for Halloween, it is going to be spectacular as well. So clear skies. Just saw a plane coming in. So they're landing off to the northwest because we do have a little bit of a breeze coming in here out of the northwest this morning. 52 degrees right now, about uh, uh, four or five below the normal average low temperature. Still very dry air. And there's that wind out of the west to northwest at five miles per hour. I think we'll continue to drop down a couple of more notches here in the next uh, couple of hours. Stinson at 50, 55. Kelly and Randolph at 57 bone dry air upstairs in the atmosphere as well as darker shade on here, which means we're going to have some just glorious blue skies today. Mold and juniper are on the moderate side. Ragweed is low, so clear, chilly. Yep, grab a jacket, especially the little ones and wait for a bus and then sunny, little breezy. Very, very nice today. Open up the windows today and then over the weekend. Yes, it is going to be very nice. Another very cold morning tomorrow. Uh, still chilly Sunday morning really good trick-or-treating weather and we'll start to notice the return of the humidity it's still going to be comfortable on sunday but then by next week especially monday morning you're going to notice more humidity very mild and then we do have another front moving through here midweek and perhaps even another front in behind that okay if you are getting ready to uh hit the roads you may want to warm up the car just a little bit had a yeah. couple of problems earlier this morning but not anything big right now, right? We still have the same lingering problems around there, Mike. You know, we're taking a look at Trans Guide here in just a moment. You can see that we do have that construction that has been causing big delays here off I-10 East at Loop 6. At Loop 16 to 4 is a shot that we're seeing right now. Taking a closer look, uh, as we can see that we do have that construction that has been causing that problem uh, for probably throughout the morning, really. It should have wrapped around 5.30. Taking a look right at the map, though, we, it looks like the slowdown may have stopped uh, or has uh, really traffic getting moving through that area. Now, now, there is some striping and barrier operations that have been going on out there. Alternately, that has led to alternating main lane closures in both directions from Greytown Road to File Road. Now, keep in mind, this does wrap today, but it looks like we are seeing just some residual construction crews out there. So make sure that you're driving carefully through that area. Give them plenty of room to wrap up. Again, as mentioned to Mike, we still have some lingering problems out there. This stall there off Loop 6, 410 East beyond McCullough Avenue. Let's check in the Trans Guide camera. It does appear that uh, vehicle could be abandoned, so make sure you're watching out for that vehicle if you're heading in that direction and we still have this stall off US 281 southbound at Bitters Road. It has somewhat been a morning of stalls and delays. Thankfully, no big crashes just yet, but we know more people are going to get out there this morning, so make sure that you are driving carefully this morning. Taking a look at our inbound times. Thankfully, it is still green across the board at 631 AM. You see that uh, we're not going to encounter any issues if you're traveling to the downtown San Antonio area and perhaps in the next few moments. So perfect time to warm up the car, grab that cup of coffee and enjoy the ride. Uh, and as you take one last look here at Trans Guide I-10 East at Loop 1604 traffic moving in that direction, but we're going to continue to watch that. Hopefully these crews can wrap up pretty soon. Mark, Stephanie.
New this morning, a man says he was just role playing, but San Antonio police say he was committing a crime. That man is now in jail, accused of trying to have sex with a teenager he met online. Katrina Weber is live near downtown with that story. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that police were doing a bit of role playing themselves. Well, that's right, Stephanie. This, uh, the affidavit says that the suspect was actually communicating with an undercover officer who was playing the role of a 16-year-old girl. I landed 46-year-old Patrick Ramirez in jail yesterday. He's charged with the online solicitation of a minor. The arrest affidavit says that Ramirez first came to the attention of police last month as they were monitoring a website that's known for prostitution and child sexual offenses. It says the undercover officer told Ramirez she was only 16, but he continued talking to her in a sexual way, eventually making plans this week to meet up and have sex. Police say Ramirez ultimately canceled that, those plans, but he was arrested anyway. Now, according to the affidavit, he told investigators that he was just role-playing because he knew all along that the person on the other end of the line was fake. But still, he is facing some very real trouble right now. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A man is dead this morning following a west side shooting. It happened just after 1030 at a motel on West Commerce Street, not far from South Zarzamora. That's where San Antonio police say a man heard someone knocking on his door. And when he went to answer, that person opened fire, hitting the victim in the chest. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. Police are still looking for that shooter. Also new this morning, investigators trying to figure out what sparked a fire at an abandoned house overnight north of downtown. Happened just after midnight in Pasadena, east of I-10. When firefighters arrived, they found this. The home fully engulfed in flames. They were able to put it out pretty quickly and no one was hurt. Crusade appears that no one was living in that home. Damages are estimated to be around $20,000. New coronavirus cases and hospitalizations are on the decline across the country, but there's still no word from the Food and Drug Administration on a COVID-19 vaccine for children. Pfizer's vaccine would be for kids ages 5 to 11. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are expected to meet to discuss the matter next week. Today is the final day of early voting in the Texas Constitutional Amendment elections. Voters will decide on eight proposed amendments. The polls open up at 8 a.m. You can find a list of early voting locations on our website, ksat.com. You can also find information about each of the proposed amendments online, too. Election Day itself is coming up on Tuesday. In your morning headlines, President Biden has reached a historic framework with Democrats in Congress on his domestic policy plan, but he must still nail down votes from a few skeptical fellow Democrats. The president announced his plans at the White House yesterday after traveling to Capitol Hill earlier in the day to pitch House Democrats. The proposal is now $1.75 trillion. He wanted a deal before he left for global summits in Europe, but votes are still a ways off as lawmakers push for more. A dramatic rescue in Austin. Take a look at this. Firefighters saved two men stuck on a scaffold nearly 200 feet in the air yesterday. The only way crews could reach the Serrano workers was from above, which meant rescuers had to be 300 feet above the ground. The rescue was a success and nobody was hurt. And have you ever been driving on our Texas roadways and you see someone toss a cigarette or a piece of trash out their window? Well, a new app will allow anyone to tattle on them. Sarah Costa spoke with the Texas Department of Transportation about its Don't Mess With Texas app and how they respond to Texan litter bugs. We've all seen it. Cigarette butts, gum wrappers, soda and beer cans and food containers on our 80,720 miles of Texas roadways. Here about 362 million pieces of trash accumulate on Texas roads. It's why the Texas Department of Transportation started its Don't Mess With Texas campaign 35 years ago and now has an app where you can tattle on fellow Texans if you see them littering on Texas highways. The app is called Don't Mess With Texas. Just make sure you have a passenger take notes, like get the license plate number, make and model of the vehicle. Plug in um, the vehicle make and model, license plate, location and time, and you can actually put in there what you saw them litter, um, whether it came from the passenger side or the driver's side or even the bed of the truck, which is a big problem here in Texas. After the report is processed, the litter bug will receive a letter in the mail from TxDOT reminding them about the incident and a don't mess with Texas litter bag along with information on state litter laws. 
Your submission is strictly confidential. The litterer will not be able to find out who submitted them to TxDOT. TxDOT also encourages Texan drivers to keep the bag in your car for trash that accumulates and then just keep reusing it. Texans take such great pride in their state and they really do appreciate the opportunity to be able to hold each other accountable whenever they do see people litter on Texas roads. So it just gives them the opportunity to feel some ownership over the state that they love. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos is a long held Mexican tradition being celebrated tonight right here in San Antonio. Commemoration meant to honor those who have passed away. And tonight, KSET will host the 2021 Day of the Dead River Parade. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live and tells us what you can expect and how you can watch. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Mac and, uh, Mark and Stephanie. I'm located at La Villita, where our Estefania Jimenez, Alicia Barrera, and Steve Spreester will be hosting the highly anticipated Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead San Antonio River Parade. And if you don't have Friday night plans, don't worry, we got you. The Day of the Dead will certainly be coming to life here at the Arneson River Theater. Dia de los Muertos is a Mexican multi-day holiday that is celebrated on November 1st and 2nd to honor those who have passed away. And tonight, the Day of the Dead San Antonio River Parade will be bringing to life a number of colorful and elaborate floats with ofrendas or offerings for those who are no longer with us, as well as the infamous Catrinas, well-dressed skeletons, and calaveras, decorated skulls. Now, this tradition is also celebrated by using marigolds or simpatsuchil to build los altares with offerings from those who have passed. Now you can buy tickets online at ksat.com or watch from home here on ksat 12 or on any streaming device. Now Mark, Stephanie, the parade will begin at 7.30 p.m. tonight and the streaming will start at 8 o'clock p.m. Reporting live from La Villita, Jonathan Cotto, ksat 12 News. Thanks for the preview, Jonathan. 638, about 54 degrees. And people travel from all over to check out the Magnolia Hotel in Seguin. After the break, we're talking about some of the ghosts who call it home. Thanks. All right, folks, we're just days away from November. That means some of the men here at KSAT will start to look a little different. No Shave November has been a long-standing tradition, and it's all in an effort to raise funds towards cancer research, treatment, and prevention. Stephen Cavazos is KSAT's team captain this year, and what makes this year stand out? Hey, thank you guys. That's quite the introduction. You know, this is going to be a very special year, and I know, Mark, this was your last day of shaving. Mike, how about you? Um, and me as well. And you know what? You're going to expect a lot of scruff, but more importantly, more nonprofits will benefit this year. A total of 10 to be exact. And this month long journey is about to get growing. No Shave November has been a tradition for many years where people usually ditch the trip to the barber or salon and grow out their hair. But that tradition underwent its own transformation in 2007. The Hill family of Chicago lost their family, their father, that is Matthew Hill, to colon cancer. That was sometime after the, fam the family started a Facebook group with just just a few followers. Now their mission was simple to raise money for cancer research, prevention and education during No Shave November. Now since then over $12 million has gone towards those efforts and the cause just keeps growing around the country. Last year the men here at KSAT put down their razors and let their facial hair grow. You can take a look there. There's Mark growing it out there and we raised close to 10,000. There's Justin Horn right there and David Sears. Yeah, again, we raised close to $10,000 and ranked fifth in the country in terms of group groups that is and this year we hope to exceed that goal now each of the 10 organizations does focus on different areas of cancer but they all share that same mission to end cancer for all now you can read more about those efforts at ksat.com and of course we're going to have more on our efforts coming up on gmsa at nine now let's go ahead and get a quick look at the roads here things are getting moving from this shots at trans guide you can see that things are moving pretty quickly here off i-35 at weedner uh, right now we do have traffic that is picking up in some areas and slowing down at others. We talked about a big slowdown there off some uh, due to some construction delays, but it looks like that has wrapped up. We first want to start here off Loop 410 at Ray Ellison. Northbound lanes are seeing some big delays thanks to a stalled vehicle. A quick jump up here, though. We do uh, talk about that striping and barrier operations. This has been the problem throughout the morning. Crews had to experience some sort of delay there, and it's led to, uh, but it should be wrapping today. It's been alternating main lane closures in both directions from Graytown Road to File Road. Again, that is wrapping today. Looks like traffic moving through those eastbound lanes pretty smoothly. Have this stalled 
there. Still pesky issue off Loop 410 eastbound at McCullough Avenue. And a quick jump up here does show we have a stall off 281 southbound at Bitters Road. Not causing any issues, but check those vehicles before you get out there this morning, guys. Sure will. Thank you, Stephen. All right, what do we have, Mike? Nice. What do you call a skeleton hockey team? The Bone Breakers. Love it. Uh, that's smart. I like love, that. love that over there. So what's going on on the far right side? I can't. Uh, it's <laughs> oh, the, yeah, can't. the little one. And one, where's the where's the dog? Oh, it's a fight. OK, that's a hockey fight. And then, <laughs> oh, with his ho jersey pulled over his head. Yes. Oh, there you go. OK, uh, yeah, so as hockey fans would say, uh, they went to a fight and a hockey game broke out. <laughs> But the, the dog's not in that picture. So. I think so. All right. Well, oh, probably. Oh, he's the dog's fighting too. You see, he's he's he's. Uh, I got I got to step back. This it's hard to see that yeah. monitor. Mm -hmm. So the dog's yeah, the dog's biting the. Um, oh. You okay. see him? He's hanging on the. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Right here. Right there. There's the yeah, dog. He's, okay. He's, People are screaming at their teeth right now. Come on, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> this standing close to this yeah, wall is like yes. you got up this close to your TV yeah. set yes. where you can't. Okay, try that, Mike. <laughs> what, what to go like this? <laughs> <laughs> Look don't, at the little don't dots. Fall. Cool. So, uh, beautiful blue sky or clear skies out there, I should say, right now. Beautiful flying weather, and there's the uh, early glow of the sunrise. 52 in town, 39 now in Curva. I think that's the first. If memory serves me correctly, the first first reading down in the 30s so far this season out there in the uh, the hill country. So, yep, it's downright cold. 38 is the dew point temperature, which means bone dry air. That's allowing temperatures to drop down and then big warm up and nothing obviously showing up in the uh, satellite picture right now. This huge storm covering most of the almost eastern half of the country. This is responsible for our cooler weather on the backside of it, pulling down all that nice, pleasant fallish air around here. Most of the country is experiencing fall like conditions right now. Nothing's going on for the next couple of days. We uh, may see a couple of clouds by Monday, I think late Sunday, Monday, and then also Tuesday and going into then the middle part of the week. We'll have more clouds and also a couple of showers showing up here. And this is as the front moves on through and this is going to be Wednesday into Thursday and then we'll have some uh, much cooler temperatures coming in here by the latter part of the week. And it looks like then another front's going to try and move through perhaps by the latter part of next weekend. And that would be another reinforcing shot of cool air. But here's those upper level wind lines. We'd like to see that coming right there out of the north and that's being wrapped around or is wrapping around that low. And that's what's pulling in all that, like I said, beautiful weather around here. So that stays the case for the next couple of days. And then things are going to start to flatten out a little bit, if you will, in the upper level wind lines, which means temperatures will start to get slightly milder. Going to be warmer, 82 degrees on Sunday, milder than the first part of next week. Then here's the next kind of wave, this little trough moving through. That's going to be the front that moves through on Wednesday. Then in behind that, um, temperatures will maybe modify a little bit toward the weekend and then another trough is going to develop out there to the uh, northwest of us and that's what's going to come through then by looks like now maybe late Sunday Monday now still I mean eight nine days away but it's nice to see we get this progression and starting to see fronts coming through with a lot more frequency now as we get into fall. 70 degrees at uh, noon, sunny skies, good looking day. We're going to have uh, kind of windy conditions today, though, out of the northwest at about uh, 15, 20 miles per hour, a little bit uh, gusty at times, 75 for a high temperature. And of course, for trick or treat and weather, uh, it's going to be a high temperature of 82 degrees on Sunday. And so as the little ghouls and goblins go out there, we'll be right around upper 70s and then dropping down to right around 71 degrees at 8 o'clock and mid 60s by 10 o'clock. So again, it won't cool off as quickly once the sun starts to go down Sunday as it will tonight, as it will tomorrow night. So again, if you're going out tonight, football or Day of the Dead Parade, do take a jacket. You hear, An extra you're hearing jacket. this stuff? Yeah. Yes. Well, I did. I had a hoodie. It just, already, was, it just okay. wasn't enough. But it wasn't but enough. Now. I needed an extra jacket. Right. Yeah. She's going to put an extra jacket, and you said you're going to add a blanket to your. Oh, I already have your, blankets. Throw in the car. SUV. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Good. Good. I'm ready. All right. Blanket if you're sitting in the stands tonight. That's, that's a good idea. True. Mm -hmm. That's Those true. Those aluminum seats get cold quick, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll you. be prepared. Thank you, Mike. And this morning, we've been telling you about the haunted Magnolia Hotel in Seguin. So for history, plenty of ghosts who still linger around. The owners, Jim and Aaron Getty, took our KSAT crew on a tour, told them about the spirits they've come to know. Some include Texas Rangers, a mistress, children, even a murderer. They say when you walk in each room, you get feel the different energies. And some of the ghosts make themselves known in other ways. 
When our spirits come forward, they come forward with their sins. If you uh, enjoy the paranormal, uh, it's like a paranormal Disney World here. <laughs> So here are some examples. When a child's spirit is present, they say you can smell baby powder. Whoa. Or in the case of the mistress, uh, Madame Rose, they say you can smell roses. And when it came to the murderer's room, our crew says they felt anxious and got really hot. So be sure to tune in to GMSA tomorrow for a closer look at what our crew experienced and also happening tomorrow. The Magnolia Hotel will have a free open house from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Happy Halloween, everybody. 650, about 54 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, are you over 50 but low on savings? We'll share some tips so you can retire on time. Bundle up as you head outside. The sun is coming up. The moon is, is that the moon or an airplane, Mike? He said yes. That is an airplane. Okay, thank you. Uh, much more coming right here on GMSA. We'll wrap up on your Friday morning after the break. Plans allegedly made online have led to real life trouble for one man. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That man is facing criminal charges after San Antonio police say he tried to meet a teenage girl for sex. 46 year old Patrick Ramirez charged with the online solicitation of a minor. The arrest affidavit says he began talking to an undercover officer last month who he thought was a 16 year old girl. It says this week, though, he took it to another level when he made plans to meet her for sex. Police say Ramirez ended up canceling, but they still arrested him yesterday. And according to the affidavit, he told officers he was just role playing because he knew the person he was talking to was not real. Well, the affidavit says that police were monitoring an online website at the time, one that's known for prostitution and child sexual offenses, and that is when Ramirez came to their attention. Reporting near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The Day of the Dead San Antonio River Parade is here, and you can find a link for that on our website at KSAT.com. And several members of our KSAT family will be there to help celebrate on your TV. The broadcast kicks off at 8 p.m. Tonight. Let's check on traffic, see how things are looking at 5 till 7. Here's Steven. Morning rush is here. Mark and Steph, you can take a look right now. Transcat shows that we are getting a pretty busy commute here off I-10. Folks getting out there this morning. Taking a quick look, though, we do have a crash to talk about off I-35 northbound in Malone. Uh, our map picked it up as a stall, but the TxDOT website has listed that as a vehicle crash. So make sure you're driving carefully through that area. We do have some buildup of yellow indicating a slowdown. Big slowdown here due to a stalled vehicle off Loop 410 northbound at Ray Ellison Boulevard. We'll continue to track the, track the traffic throughout the morning, Mike. Yeah, Steve and Alicia tonight and Jen and right. Stephanie down there. Take coats, take coats, folks. Yes. Oh, beautiful flying weather and the sun is going to be coming up in about uh, 45 minutes or so. And just a great day. We're down to 50 right now here in town. Still 39 in Kerrville. One of the uh, cooler morning. One of the, I think still the first time we've seen 30s now on the map wow. so far this season. 70 at noon, 75 high temperature. Great looking weekend, great for football, bundle up, parade, and trick or treating. Happy Halloween, be Happy safe. Halloween. And uh, Steven's back at nine to talk more about No Shave November, yep. which starts on Monday. We'll see you back here at nine. Have a great day.